Welcome back to the video blog. My name is Adam Daniel Mize, PMD for Hire, producer of marketing and distribution, PMDforHire.com. So yesterday, Sunday, that was a great day. That's the Film Courage Day. That's when we all sit by our computers for an hour starting at 12 p.m. Pacific Time to listen to the invited guests on the show that is lovingly conducted by David Brannan and Karen Warden. Now yesterday they were hosting a guy by the name of Thomas Woodrow, who is the producer on a much lauded, critically acclaimed independent film called Bass Ackwards, Ass Backwards. Bass Ackwards, which pretty much was one of the darlings at the 2010 Sundance Film Festival down in Park City, Utah. Now, the thrust of the interview was about how difficult the journey was for Woodrow and company and his crew after having received all of the different hosannas of joy that they did at the various festivals. And during the film's festival run, Woodrow was expressing the difficulty that the team experienced in trying to get the film uh, distributed and recoup, let's say, the budget that they had spent, the $30,000 in his words that they had spent on the film, in order to get that recouped and how much of an uphill climb and a challenge that was. I just wanted to point a couple of things out in relation to that interview because these were the first two things that came to my mind. A, the filmmakers that don't have a good time with distribution, that make films for X amount of dollars, thousands that is, and that aren't able to recoup their budgets, they're the ones who end up coming off and having the doom and gloom prognostications for the future. They're the people that end up saying that the state of film is in disarray, that independent film is basically a dying art form, that the independent film movement has been co-opted by the studio system such that they have what's called the independent departments of the studios, which are basically uh, lower budget studio movies in the 10 to 15 million dollar range. I'm of course thinking of Sony Pictures Classic and Paramount Classics, this thing. Only the producers that don't score on the distribution game end up seeing all the doom and gloom negativity, but the producers that do end up succeeding in things like VOD to rent, VOD to own, selling DVDs, selling merchandise, and having successful non-theatrical live events, those producers don't have a negative opinion about independent film. In fact, those are the producers that you will invariably find on all the various Facebook pages and elsewhere online talking positively on an upbeat note, not just because they're kind of maudlin and silly and unrealistic about the state of film, optimistic to a fault. No, because they've actually succeeded at it. So there are really no hard and fast statistics as to the producers that do badly and the producers that do successfully. Now another idea that I wanted to point out was the concept of micropayments. I happen to have a couple of friends who are in the gaming industry. This time last year I was in Beijing and in Shanghai in China and one of my friends designs games over there and we were talking at the time about micropayments Micropayments, of course, being in anywhere from the nickel, five cents to 25 cents category. Just think about this for a moment. What if independent film or one intrepid producer were to step into the breach and basically organize the recoupment of a film's budget around micropayments, such that if you wanted to watch a movie, you could watch a movie over the course of three days for a quarter. That's right, 25 cents. You, through a guaranteed payment processor would have one quarter billed to a credit card or a debit card and you can watch that film on your computer on a unique IP address for exactly three days not three ninety nine not two ninety nine a quarter you couldn't share that film with anybody else naturally you could have twenty five people watching in front of your computer screen but if somebody else wanted to watch the movie they would have to pony up twenty five cents this would take the stuffing right the hell out of the torrent sites and would give absolutely no incentive for the pirates and for the hackers to end up flipping off DVDs or pirating movies, independent films too. A quarter, that's right. You do the numbers. You crunch it. That would bring back a $30,000 budget faster than I don't know what, but it would bring it back a lot quicker than trying to hammer people over the head with a $14.99 DVD or even a $3.99 rental. Naturally, the independent filmmakers and the producers that understand their audiences will always be able to convince their loyal following to pay $3.99 for a movie rental, even to fork out $19.99 for a DVD. But that's only for the exceptional of the exceptional stories. Of course, I'm thinking of films like Head On by 
German director Fatih Akin, or in German, Gegen die Wand, which was a great film that basically slammed the New York independence scene back in 04. Not every film's like that, which is why we should start thinking about micropayments. It's not so silly. And like my friend in China said, once somebody basically hammers all the kinks out and micropayments is a fully accepted means of payment and not something that people giggle at, you'll be able to just multiply the numbers. People would fork out a quarter. I would. I would, I would buy 35 movies a week at a... Excuse me. I would buy 35 movies a week at a quarter just to be able to have them, even if I don't watch them. And that's the idea that producers have to keep focusing on instead of getting on radio shows and being all doom and gloom. And at the end of the day... <clears throat> What's 30,000 bucks? I mean, I'm not going to say that 30,000 bucks is an easy spend for anybody these days, or that even in good times that 30,000 bucks should be thrown out. Each dollar in any production should be accounted for, especially if you had to cobble that budget together from a number of different investors, a consortium. But 30,000 bucks? I mean, you have a problem really spending 30,000 bucks to make a movie? Is that really then something you should be doing with your career? I don't know. I know it sounds judgmental, but I'm just laying that out there. So thanks again to David and Karen for getting me thinking about all this. And as always, I think I need to take a sip of coffee just to wet my whistle. I wish for you many many good things. And just a small note, I'll be doing film reviews now at filmcourage.com. Film reviews, independent film reviews. If you want your movie reviewed and then put up on filmcourage.com, get in touch with the people at Film Courage, David Brandon and Karen Morden, and let them know that you'd like me, Adam Daniel Mazet, reviewing your movie. All the best, and see you tomorrow.